Bonjour, bonjour. Ah, the age old question. Andrew, I want to start a website. Which platform should I use? I mean, I see Shopify, I see Squarespace. Could you tell me what should I use? What is better? Well, you're in the right spot because in this video, we're going to be comparing Shopify with Squarespace. We're gonna look at like the reason they exist, their pricing structures, their integrations, what is best. And if you stick to the very end of this video, you're gonna make a pretty informed decision about which platform fits you best. But before we do that, I'm going to go need a refill. So let's get that first. So apparently I have to take more B-roll shots. It's called setting the scene or something like that. I don't know. So here's me making coffee. Talk about Squarespace and Shopify. All right, I'm back. Okay, so the first and most important element when choosing between Shopify or Squarespace is asking yourself the question, what are you trying to achieve? And when asking yourself that question, you basically have two options. Option number A, I'm trying just really to inform people. I'm just trying to let the world know that I'm out there and trying to create awareness for my brand. And option number B is I have a product I want to sell. I want to sell it online. I want to accept money and I want to be sure it's shipped and inventory is managed and this and that. So those were your two options. Okay, Matt, let's look at the information part for a bit. Your goal is to create brand awareness and we'll cover the transactional part in just a bit. But let's say that your goal is brand awareness. You are a plumber, you are a hairdresser, you're a design agency, um, you're maybe selling a physical product, but that physical product is in the showroom and you're never going to do it transactionally online. You just want to create brand awareness and and let the internet know that you exist. So if that's the case, then Squarespace might be your best option here. Because if you're not trying to do anything transactional, you're just basically going to need a super solid content management system to push out your blogs or you, any articles that you want to tell the world about your subject matter. You want a beautiful website and nice designs and pictures and stuff like that. And so Squarespace really offers you exactly that. It offers you a easy way to create a beautiful website to easily manage your art, manage your articles and even some photo editing. And then all the rest can be done with integrations, but there is a little caveat in integrations that I'm going to cover in a little bit. So that's maybe the best option if you just want to create a brand awareness. However, if you really want to accept payments at some point on your website, if your website is becoming transactional, that completely changes the ball game because you're going to have to rethink your strategy. And in that case, Shopify might be a way better option. You see, Shopify is going to offer you a slew of things that are out of the box. These are gonna be things like multi-currency checkouts, tax calculation, uh, a point of sale system so that you can sell in person, tons of integrations and advanced reporting. I mean, if you're running a business, that might be quite useful to have this on your transactional side. But of course, a big part of running your business is managing your dineros. And so let's kind of look at the pricing of both of them. Both platforms have actually a pretty similar pricing structure and I'll overlay it right here. They both have a two week free trial. They both have a bunch of little under plans that come with different features and they both have an enterprise plan for way bigger business. But I did some research for you and I wanna kind of bring on the biggest differences between each plan on the Squarespace side. So you're pretty well informed. Okay, so I wrote them down right here because there are quite a lot. The personal plan doesn't allow you to sell anything and it prevents you from customizing your site with CSS. What does that mean? Um, let's say that you really hate the button on your website. You want it to be blue and it's currently red, but there is no option in changing it from blue to red. Well, you can't access your code and just change it from blue to red. Not on the personal plan. On the other plans, you can. Okay, another important thing to keep in mind is you will pay a 3% 3 
percent uh, transaction fees on all sales generated in the business plans and this is going to be on top of the credit card processing fees which is not nothing if you really want to take e-commerce seriously you're going to no need to go to the advanced plan uh, because there's a whole bunch of things that are not included in the other plans such as um, you're going to want abandoned cart recovery real-time carrier shipping advanced discount gift cards and for all of that, again, you'll need the most advanced plan. A cool feature to note is that on the business plan, you get one free year of Google Suite, which allows you to have like a user uh, email and like a whole bunch of storage online under Drive and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. That's nice. So you get one free year of Google Suite for one user. Cool. If you end up paying upfront for the entire year, they're going to give you a free domain. And that is just for the... Um, Oh, no, that's for every plan. Fantastic. So that's cool. And then finally, I do want to mention that the most advanced plan, which is the business plan, it comes with a, like more sophisticated options, such as like pop up messages and banners and this and that. So that's kind of what you need to know the differences between all the plans. Now, when we're talking about the difference between the Shopify plans, there is some things you need to note as well. First of all, the light plan, you're not building any website with it. it what it basically allows you to do is upload your your products into the Shopify backend so your customers can't see this and then it just gives you a little buy button that you can put anywhere so on an existing website you can put the buy button or you can put the buy button on let's say your Facebook page so you're not really creating a website here you they're just giving you a buy button and allowing you to easily manage that transaction another thing you're going to need to know is that if you have a lot of users in your business that want to access your Shopify with the Shopify basic, you only get access to two users. So if you need more people managing your store, you're gonna either need to share a password or you know have a bigger plan so to that the shopify advanced plan lets you have up to 15 users which should really solve that problem yes reporting is available in the shopify basic plan but really the reporting starts getting a bit more interesting in the shopify advanced plan at 79 dollars a month you see below that you get a very solid overview of what's happening but you can't really go into these specific details you could say hey andrew you can just install google analytics and for some things that's going to do a fantastic job but if you're a company that's like super super nitty gritty nitty precise picky something along those lines about reporting you're going to want to do at least the shopify advanced plan. and then one last important thing to note is about the shopify point of sale system is when you actually physically sell in store uh, shopify comes with it for all of the plans however um there is like a 90 dollar surcharge if you want to access some premium features of the Shopify POS. This includes multiple locations uh, when you go over a certain amount of employees uh, for your cash register and this and that. So you do want to keep that in mind. If you're just one person selling in person, then that's no problem. But if you're a big team over multiple stores, you're gonna have to keep that in mind. Okay, both of Squarespace and Shopify actually also offer a enterprise plan, what they call. With Shopify, it's called Shopify Plus. With Squarespace, it's Squarespace Select, I beg your pardon. And Shopify Plus, let's go over that one real quick. It basically offers you a discount on your transaction fees. Um, well, so let's start with saying that Shopify Plus is $2,000 per month, which might sound a lot, but it gives you a discount on your transaction fees like I just said so sometimes it's just brainless math if you do over a certain amount of sales a month because you're gonna save more on like the discount of the transaction fee than Shopify is actually costing you uh, it offers you checkout modifications so you can do some custom code in the checkout scripts you have a dedicated account manager and you have a whole bunch of little extra features in Shopify plus on the other side of the spectrum you got the Squarespace select and they basically offer you a an account manager it's it's a pretty new program so they offer you an account manager dedicated they offer you a uh, premium support and they offer you dedicated or what was it again 
SEO slash design consultant. So here you can kind of see that really again, Squarespace is really more focused on getting your brand message out there with all the design and, and content around that, while Shopify is more focused on making your transactions happen. Okay, so which one is cheaper? If you're going to do transactional and you're gonna sell something, it's a no brainer. The cheaper one is the Shopify business, like the basic, I'm sorry, Shopify basic plan at 29 US dollars a month. However, if that's not really your thing, you're not sure you're gonna sell yet, you wanna do some content management, brand awareness, you might be leaning to the Squarespace $16 a month personal plan. There is a couple of things that you do need to note is, the Squarespace personal plan, before you know it, you're in their business plan at $26 a month. Let me explain. With the Squarespace personal plan, you can't hook up MailChimp. So on their custom order forms, meaning that it's very hard for you to collect email addresses and build data for spreading your content. You also can add these little pop-ups and banners, which sometimes can be useful, but more specifically, and this actually only matters if you do content management worldwide. So if you want different areas to know about your brand, then you're gonna have to follow different policies around the world. Let's say you're a brand in California, but you also want to make sure that people in Europe know about you. Well, when people in Europe visit your website, they're going to need to see a pop-up about GDPR and basically privacy rules. And because you're not allowed to access JavaScript or CSS on the personal plan, you can't really customize this in. So before you know it, you're gonna end up uh, upgrading to the business plan at $26 a month, and then you're just $4 three dollars you're three dollars three dollars a month away from the shopify basic plan which allows your transactional part as well so it's pretty much neck and neck at that point okay so andrew in conclusion well i think in conclusion it's pretty interesting to actually look at the mission statements of both companies because that's going to tell us a lot hence why you need a mission statement so Let's pull it up right here. Squarespace is basically telling us, we exist to help people with creative ideas to stand out and succeed. We create a modern platform that enables millions to build a brand, share their stories, and transact with their customers in an impact and beautiful online presence. Um, okay, that's cool. And Shopify is saying, um, we're just here to make commerce better for everyone so businesses can focus on what they do best, which is building and selling products. So again, you see this presence really clearly. Shopify is basically saying, hey, we just want to help you do the transactional stuff easier and better. Um, Squarespace is more saying, hey, we just want to bring out your message clearer and make sure that your brand is, is the message and the identity is more defined so that people can contact you directly and basically do business with you. I do want to add one more caveat to Shopify and because I'm a Shopify expert, I'm kind of biased, but one of the reasons Shopify is so fantastic is that they have 1 million stores on the Shopify network. And the basic core idea of Shopify is, let's say USPS or Canada Post, a shipper. Shopify approaches Canada Post and says, hey guys, um, we have 1 million stores. So if you want Shopify to do business with Canada Post and an official relationship, you're going to want uh, to give us a discount. So you as a Shopify owner suddenly get a preferential rate on Canada Post because Shopify negotiated that for you. The same thing with credit cards and the same thing with, with a lot of things in the Shopify ecosystem. So that's kind of where Shopify shines compared to any other uh, of these platforms is that they're negotiating a whole bunch of rates for you so that you can compete in a certain sense with Walmart or with Amazon and have kind of the same shipping rates as they do. I'm oversimplifying it, but they're basically saying, hey, we have a million merchants, we're going to negotiate on your behalf. And no other platform is really doing that. So again, if you wanna do something transactional, Shopify is for me a, a clear winner. If you're more like, no, I just wanna make brand awareness, then Squarespace is a fantastic, fantastic option. Definitely look into that. My name is Andrew from ecomexperts.io. Please, if you enjoy 
enjoyed this, give it a subscribe, give it a like. I talk about Shopify and e-commerce all the time, all day long. I can't shut up about it. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in another video. Ciao.